on behalf of the uh, Eli Yoder family, I would like to thank each one for coming out this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. To share in this time of celebration. It is a time of sorrow, a time of weeping, but for Uncle Eli, it's a time of celebration. And I think we can celebrate with him this morning. We will sing two congregational songs, and the first one is Does Jesus Care? Uh, there'll be a little uh, song slip in, the, in your obituary that you got this morning. <coughs> Does Jesus Care? Yes, he cares. Let's sing that with enthusiasm. Yes, he cares. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. Does Jesus care when my heart is pain? Deeply for mirth or song. As the burdens press and the cares distress, and the way grows weary and long. Oh, yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior. Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? And my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks. Is it aught to him does he see? Oh, yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long night dreary, I know my Savior cares. And then turn the song seats over to Just As I Am. <clears throat> Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am thou wilt. Wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relief, because I promise I believe, O oh, Lamb of God, I come, I come. Eli A. Yoder, 82, husband of Mary Jane Yoder, or Mary Jane Miller Yoder, passed away Thursday, December 29th, 2022, at St. Francis downtown. Born in Springs, Pennsylvania, Eli was the son of the late Alan Yoder and Lizzie Tice Yoder. Eli was a chicken farmer and feed mill worker in Jamestown, Pennsylvania, and later in Farmville, Virginia. Eli is survived by his wife of 62 years, son Jason Yoder of Greenwood, daughters Gloria Moser and Tommy of Greenville, 
Fern Shop and Milton of Seneca, Sharon Overholt and Mike of Greenwood, brothers Vernon Yoder of Warren, Ohio, Lloyd Yoder and Hazel of Somerset, Pennsylvania, Paul Yoder and Wanda of Binninger, Maryland, Mark Yoder and Ruth of Canyon City, Colorado. 14 grandchildren, Jeremy Douglas, Bethany, Toby, Junior, Shana, Jake, Janae, Crystal, Amber, Diamond, Jade, Jared, Preston, and 20 great grandparents or grandchildren. In addition to his parents, Eli is preceded in death by his, his brothers and sisters, Anna Catherine Yoder, Owen Yoder, Alta Kilius, Champ Edwin Yoder, Elvin Yoder, Ada Beachy, and Evelyn Yoder. In addition, the family has asked me to read a poem entitled Life is Fleeting. It's written by nephew John Yoder. Life is fleeting. Life is fleeting, or so they say, but that's not how I feel today. There wasn't enough time with you. This day seems a year, and it's still not through. Life, it's a paradox to me. The bad times drag and the good times flee. You're gone, they say, beyond the clouds, and I'm feeling lonely in the middle of crowds. They all mean well, this crowd today, leaving a hug before turning away. And though I wouldn't bring you back, my heart feels deflated like an old burlap sack. I know the God in whom I trust, and by faith cling to him I must. Looking at the long road ahead, Jesus, I ask you, please, remove fear and dread. If life is fleeting, like they say, please advance the clock of this day. Move it along, that would be best, but stay right here with me, for your presence brings rest. If I had only known the last time would be the last time I would have put off all the things I had to do I would have stayed a little longer Held on a little tighter Now what I'd give for one more day with you Cause there's a wound here in my heart where something's missing And they tell me that it's gonna heal with time But I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased And knowing yours are healed is healing mine The only scars in heaven that won't be lost to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven On the hands that hold you now I know the road you walked Was anything but easy You picked up your share of scars Along the way oh, But now you're standing in the sun You fought your fight And your race is run The pain is all a million miles away the only scars in heaven that won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken. And all the old will be made new. And the thought 
I'm standing with you in the sun I'll fight this fight in this race I'll run until I finally see what you can see oh the only scars in heaven that won't be Scars in heaven Or on the hands that hold you now only scars in heaven. Wow. And what good hands they are to hold us right now. Mary, Gloria, Fern, Sharon, Jason, your families. I just want to wish you God's peace on this day. And know that we stand with you. Um, there's no way that I can claim the degree of loss that you feel today. But I think to all of us gathered here, Eli was a special man. And um, I have many special memories in your home. And... Um, as I, as I share today, it's an honor and it's a privilege that I'm not sure I'm worthy of to stand here and give tribute to Uncle Eli. But I want to share with you the words of Psalm 46 that just say, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea and though the water thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Because there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. But the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in sunder. He burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Comforting words for not only today but for our world today in times of chaos. 
There is a God who stands firm, who stands supreme, and he holds us. He doesn't change. And I, I know that I've heard these words from little up. But today they mean so much more. Having lived life, not nearly as long as many of you here, but having lived life, I am becoming more and more aware of the sovereign hand of God and his purposes that hold true and stand firm. And today I want to encourage you to find comfort in an unchanging God. One of the things that strikes me today when someone from my father's generation passes, it's the incredible degree of knowledge and experience that goes with them. And you know, I often grieve that I didn't take more time to inquire of what they had learned in life. When members of this generation pass away, they take a wealth of information, experience, and perspective with them. Those who, like Uncle Eli, have walked with God, have discovered the power and the comfort of the words that the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. When I think of Eli, born in 1940, you think of the changes that took place in his life, in the world, in our culture. If there ever was a season to know that the Lord of hosts is with us and that the God of Jacob is our refuge. It has been through these last 82 years, a world war, various wars that have happened since then, cultural revolutions, families growing, loved ones passing, all of this in a scene that is ever-changing. The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our refuge. I remember Eli and Mary and the family coming to visit us in Virginia, doing their summer holiday trip, and they always included us and stopped at our place, and I was always jealous of the candy they brought. Um, they had so much, and they brought it along with them, and I just remember... I mean, it was bags, and this was a holiday tradition, I think, a, a summer, and, and it was great, because then they shared. They were always very generous that way. Um, I, I remember just having great times, and, and Eli and Mary uh, being a part of that, whether it was going to the zoo in Washington or whether it was just hanging out. It was great. And then family gatherings at Grandma's when um, usually somehow... Um, my siblings and I got to go up to uh, and stay with Eli's family at Uncle Albert's. That's usually where we would be um, billeted during the, those times. And it was a, a great time to just spend time. And I, I remember Eli was always around. Um, I loved his sense of humor. He would generally not speak a lot, but he could be there telling a story sort of under his breath and then chuckling away at what was happening. I, I always loved that. Um, then there were the crazy times when they lived in Virginia, and uh, my sister Carla and I would go often to, uh, to your place, and Mary would always cook food. And You know, so many times when I think about people, and we talk about the people that have been meaningful to us in life, we often talk about uncles and aunts and grandparents and parents, and we say, I just remember doing so many things with them. They allowed me to tag along. But when I thought about Eli, I said, you know what? I remember him doing things with us. He was there, not necessarily always participating, but he was there. Usually in the living room if we were goofing off and he probably thought we were crazy, but we knew he loved us and um, I knew he was always okay with me being there. Not only okay, he seemed to really like when we came by. And I loved that. Um, 
Eli's humor was, was good. It was quiet. But um, he had a gracious side to him. And I know we got into pranks at times at, um, at Eli's place. And uh, I don't know how the poor man did it because his bedroom was right off the living room. And we got pretty noisy. Um, but one, one time, um, Carla and Sharon came up with some of the worst pranks. And um, they had, uh, intending to entrap Jason or I in an embarrassing situation, had uh, covered the toilet with saran wrap one night. Now, we never got it. In fact, I don't know what happened. I figured if Mary had gotten it, she would have let us know about it. I think Eli took one for the team because we never heard about it. Um, I, 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 I just was, I, but his humor and his grace was, was evident, and, and I was very grateful for that. One thing that I knew was that Eli loved family. And that included us as his ne nephews and nieces. He was always glad to see us come, as was Mary. You always welcomed us into your home and so grateful for that. But change. Since Eli was born in 1940, much has changed in the world, particularly in our culture. Morals have changed, values have changed, society has changed. Churches have changed, our government has changed, our public discourse has changed. What is acceptable viewing has changed. What is acceptable entertainment and talk has changed. Even how we view truth has changed and how we view God has changed. How we look at human relationships and value has changed in those years. Where we used to speak of faith in God, we now speak in loose terms of spirituality. And to be sure, the looseness in our meanings and in our definitions has allowed us um, to feel like we're free from some unnecessary conflicts that come from dogmas and such. But those changing definitions also have robbed us of a sense of comfort that came with certainty. The comfort of knowing what was what the stability of definitions of truth that didn't move. It was the type of truth you could bank on. I used to think that genealogies and talk of ancestry was boring. But there came a time that it became important to me to know where I've come from and where I'm connected. Around the world today, more and more people are drifting without a good knowledge of their roots and it impacts their sense of well-being. Somehow we know that we need to be connected to people, but connections are very difficult since we live in an increasingly splintered world where everyone has their own truth. And it can be difficult to form deep and meaningful connections with people who view reality so differently from us. No, I'm not going to be talking about culture today, but I'm just explaining the culture that we live in. And it is, it is that that makes the passing of a loved one so difficult today because there goes one more relationship, one more stabilizing factor in our life, one more thing that anchored us to reality. But today I want to encourage you with the fact that God is our refuge and strength. And that's the right answer, right? So often we have the right answers. It's the Sunday school answer. It's the answer that everybody knows to be right, but it doesn't seem real. How do we grasp onto faith, and, and especially faith in God? Today, I want to share a few experiences from uh, the past 10 years. Nine of the past 10 years I spent in prison ministry working with uh, prison inmates in Western Canada. And if that taught me anything, it taught me that I didn't know how to do ministry. I, I discovered that inmates ask a lot of different questions than people in church. Not because they know less, but because they're not bound by the right answer. They want to know the real answer. I think most of us want to know the real answer today, don't we? There's something about a time like this where 
a trusted friend, a father, a, a grandfather, an uncle, a husband, uh, passes away and we, there was something we knew about his faith that anchored him. And, and we, we kind of look at that and we say, but how does that impact us today? One of the things I learned in working with inmates is that they ask tough questions. And they force me to rethink my faith. I spoke with individuals who were broken. Some who really didn't know any family member except maybe an aunt or a grandmother. People who had been abused, who, and, and, and see that the only thing that made them different from anyone else on the street was that they were behind bars. Their thought process was very much the same and it really shook me to the core to realize that so many people who had grown up in the church had no clear concept of God who is our refuge and strength. I discovered that people, when I talk about Jesus, for some, he was only a figure on a crucifix behind a priest who molested them. And when I invited them to trust Jesus, it was not trustworthy at all. And I, I think about that, and I think how often we get shaky when it comes to this. We, we speak in terms of God is our refuge. God, we can trust him. My life is in God's hands, but so many people have felt like, where was God when I was hurting? And that began to, to, to change my perspective. And today as I speak to you, I don't want to speak to you about inmates in Western Canada, but I want to tell you that there is a God who transcends the changes that we have seen and experienced. God who loves us, but how does he love us? A God who is not loving us according to performance, but in fact, the Bible tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it's not like we surprise him by our activity. He, he knows that. And sometimes we wonder, well, maybe these things happened because I did this or did that. You know, God's not that kind of God. There are consequences to actions, but God's not sitting there to be a man with a club. He is inviting us. In fact, Jesus had some disciples when he was on earth that when a village didn't want him to come in, they said, hey, can we call down fire from heaven on this place? They literally knew that they could. If Jesus gave them permission, Jesus says, you don't know what spirit you're of. That's not why I'm here. And I think some of us can learn from that today and, and realize that his, his goal was to seek and to save the lost, to seek and to save and to, to, to bring life where there was darkness and, and, and to bring light into that place. So I want to just read a passage out of 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, 13 to 18. It's a, it's a traditional funeral passage. But it says this, um, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. I've seen a lot of people with no hope in the world because they really didn't know if God, if there was such a being, existed or cared. Today, Eli lived a life that trusted in a God who cares, who loves a God who is faithful, who is eternal, who doesn't change. His promises are kept. He holds us. He's the one who says the almighty God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He's the one who while on earth said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. He's the one who has given us a living hope as an anchor for our souls that actually enters into the holiest place and grabs on to the promises of God. 
You know, an anchor for our souls is an anchor for our mind, our will, and emotions. And it might be more than that, but it's certainly not less. And when our minds and our wills and our emotions are anchored on this great God, there can be peace in the midst of storm. There can be hope in the midst of grief. There can be joy in the midst of sorrow. Joy is not necessarily happiness. But joy is a calm and peaceful assurance that there is hope beyond the day. That when the morning dawns, there is a new day. And that the mercies of God are new every morning. So I don't want you to sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus shall we always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Sounds great, but in today's world, how are these words a comfort? To those who have a relationship with God and who, who have known him and who can trust him, they are comforting but to a world that isn't sure if God exists. And perhaps he looks like my version, perhaps he looks like yours, perhaps he looks, it can be confusing. And it can actually add pain to our grief. And so I was reminded this morning of the old song, tell me the old, old story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. It's an old, old story. But do you know how many people I've met in the last 10 years that have so many strange perspectives on that old, old story? And Jesus, if he means anything, is often a caricature of Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. The context of this passage that Paul writes. Comfort one another with these words. It's based on the gospel story of a God who created the world. Paul talked about it to a group of people in Athens. They had never known the story of God. In fact, there was a group of people who were very much like today, who had a society where it was, it was love, peace, and recycle, just like we have. They, they basically did anything. And Paul says, you know, when I was walking around your city, I noticed that you were very spiritual. In fact, you worship all kinds of things. And you even have an altar that has a name on it to the unknown God. And, and, and they were so keen on being spiritually inclusive that they wanted to make sure they didn't miss anything. And he says, so the God that you're worshiping in ignorance, I want to tell you about him. And sometimes I think maybe we need to speak to the church today and say, the God whom you worship in ignorance, I need to tell you about him again. He is the God who created the world and all that is within it. He is the God who, out of one flesh or from one man populated the whole earth. The Bible tells us in Genesis that in the image of God created he man. Male and female created he them. And it was out of that couple in the garden that all of us have come. I know, Franschoff, I, I can't go back quite that far, but I know somehow I get all the way back. If you take it there to at least Noah... And on back and beyond. I, I want to tell you about this God. Because he is the God who created all things. And because he created all things, he owns all things. And he designed life and relationships to be lived. Paul goes on to say, it's in him that we live and we move and we have our being. In the book of Job, we're told that if God would with, withdraw the breath that he breathed out, our lives would be gone. Today, Eli 
His earthly breath is gone. But spiritually, he lives on because we live in a world that is eternal. Our world is temporal. It's bound by space and time. But it is hosted in a thing called eternity where God lives. And where we, it, it, there's just a thin space between us. The, the psalmist says, there's just a step between me and death. And, and when we step across that line, we're in eternity. It's not like it's somewhere down the road. Eternity is all around us. And God has placed eternity in our hearts. We were designed for that. Paul also says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I believe that is exactly where Eli is today. Paul said to live, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And I believe Eli has gained today. Not because of his performance. But the just shall live by faith. And it was by faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross that Eli can have gain in death. And as the family, as you look at this, we mourn what we miss. But can I, can I encourage you? Don't mourn what Eli will miss. Sometimes we say, oh, he'll never get to see this or he'll never get to see that. I'm not so sure, but maybe he does get to see that. I don't know. But one thing I do know is that what he is experiencing will be infinitely better. We miss the fact that he won't be able to see it. We miss the fact that he won't be here. But don't add pain to your grief by imagining that he is losing something. He loved you deeply. But today more than ever, he knows that you are in the hands of an ever-loving father that can hold you far better than he could have. And I want to encourage you as a family today to place your trust fully in this God who cares for us. God is our refuge and strength. He is a present help in trouble. And what I love is that there is a day coming when Christ will return. And at that time, guess what? Eli is going to be in the front row leaving because the dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us who have thought it was so great to remain, we're going to be at the tail of the procession, but we're going to be there. We're going to be caught up together. But just realize that there is a beautiful hope and a lively hope that is in front of us. May God give each of us courage today in understanding that there is hope beyond today. There is something that we can reach out to. There is a God who has promised these things. And we don't have to worry about the definitions. As many definitions as there may be of God, there is still a God who has spoken and revealed himself in his word. And it's in his word that we will find great strength and hope for life because it tells us the truth. If there's one comforting thing that I can leave with you today is that there is a God who doesn't change and his ways are perfect. Abraham comforted himself when he was praying for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and he says, will not the God of all the earth do right? He asked it as a question, but he, he meant it as a statement. And God, who is the judge of all the earth, will do what is right because it is right. You know, God is a judge who can't be bought or sold. There is nobody that will ever pull a case over on God. God never changes. His word is true. And like we read so often in the scriptures, not one word of his promise failed. And friends, today, not one word of his promise is going to fail. Don't sorrow as others who have no hope. We have a living hope that he will return. You know what? I don't know. I haven't seen the cemetery today. But that's going to be resurrection ground. And when Christ returns, the dead in Christ will rise first. The beauty of this is that we will see Eli again. Today is not the end. Today is not the end. Can you grasp onto that? We will see him again. We will see him at the same time we see Christ.
May we grab onto that hope. And I would just like to have a word of prayer as we continue on. Lord God, I thank you today. I thank you for the promise. I thank you that you are a God who never changes. And in a changing world, you are always the same. Great is your faithfulness. Your compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. And I pray, God, for Mary, for Gloria, for Fern, and for Sharon and Jason and their families, the grandchildren, great-grandchildren, that they will be made aware of your mercies that are new every morning, that they will find them fresh and ready uh, for each day. Would you comfort hearts, comfort hearts, their minds, and bring a peace and a quietness. Father, as we celebrate the life of Eli and what he has meant to us, Lord, would you comfort us with the stories that I'm sure we'll hear today of your work in and through him. May we live in such a way, Lord, that when the trumpet sounds, by faith we'll rise to meet you. And we praise you for the promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I do have one thing that I want to share because I won't be speaking again before the end of the service. There will be a couple of songs that are played. And, um, and then there will be a final viewing and you will be ushered out from the back. So just be prepared. Remain seated until that begins to happen. And then after the interment at the cemetery, um, there is a meal for everyone that is provided at the uh, Lifeline Community Church. If you need directions, tug on somebody's shirt sleeve or something, but the Lifeline Community Church, you can plug that into your GPS and it, you'll find it. All right. May God bless you, family. It's an honor. Thank you for allowing me to share today. God bless you.
Lately I've been noticing I say the same things he used to say And I even find myself acting the very same way I tap my fingers on the table to the rhythm in my soul And I jangle the car keys when I'm ready to go When I look in the mirror, he's right there in my eyes Staring back at me And I realize the older I get The more I can see How much he loved my mother and my brother and me And it did the best that it could And I only hope when I have my own family That every day I see A little more of my father and me Times I thought he was being just a little bit hard on me But now I understand he was making me become the man he knew that I could be And everything he ever did he always did with love And I'm proud today to say I'm his son When somebody says I hope I get to meet your dad I just smile and say you already He loved my mother and my brother and me And he did the best that he could And I only hope when I have my own family Every day I see Oh, I hope I see Lately I've been noticing I say the same things he used to say And I even find myself acting the very same way mm. I tap my fingers on the table to the rhythm in my soul And I jingle the car keys when I'm ready to go When I look in the mirror he's right there in my eyes Staring back at me and I realize the old
times I thought he was being just a little bit hard on me. But now I understand he was making me become the man he knew that I could be. And everything he ever did, he always did with love. And I'm proud today to say I'm his son. When somebody says I hope I get to meet your dad, I just smile and say, that he could and I only hope when I have my own family every day I see oh I hope I see Lately I've been noticing I say the same things he used to say And I even find